There's really two fundamental questions that we ask when we're looking at epidemics. How did this happen? And how can we prevent it from happening again? More of the country is closing down tonight. The coronavirus crisis is escalating across America. The number of people dying from the disease is rising in 26 states. Hospitals across the country are reaching a breaking point. We've known now for a long time that the single biggest driver of epidemics are people. It's things that we're doing that change the environment around us, that bring us into closer contact with wildlife. We've known that coronaviruses were a risk for emerging. If you don't understand where these viruses come from, originally, we're just gonna have this keep happening again. In February 2003, an American businessman was taken to a hospital in Hanoi with what appeared to be a bad case of the flu. But his chest x-ray looked unusual to Dr. Olivier Catan. Looks like it was snowing in the lungs. We got some patchy opacities everywhere. And I said, what's it's new? I never seen that in my textbook. The patient appeared to be recovering at first, but then his oxygen levels crashed, leaving him in critical condition, unable to breathe without a ventilator. The lungs turned completely white, completely white. You cannot see anything. It was white lungs. The patient was medevaced to Hong Kong, where he died. By then, Dr. Katan had gotten some disturbing news. Four nurses were sick. So we start to retest everything, influenza, chest x-ray. The first day, everything was normal. On the Thursday morning, there were seven people sick. On Friday, more than 20 people sick. All the staff were deteriorating. The chest x-ray were changing, worsening, and one of the nurses started to white lungs. And we say, okay, we, we have this feeling we all are going to die. A co-worker had alerted the World Health Organization, where Dr. David Heyman had already heard reports of an unusual illness spreading in China. The outbreak in Vietnam helped convince him there might be a new disease spreading around the world. By Friday of that week, there were reports from Singapore, there were reports from Hong Kong, and also from Canada. We felt it was very urgent that this infection be stopped if it could be stopped. Today, the World Health Organization has announced a global emergency because of this disease. We gave it a name. We called it Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. The disease known as SARS has now spread to at least 17 countries. Tonight, at least 60 people are dead because of it. As cases continued to spread, scientists were starting to understand the new disease. Scientists have been zeroing in on something called the coronavirus. Though coronaviruses typically cause just a mild cold, this one turned deadly. But where had it come from? SARS was traced back to a handful of early cases, people who were linked to wildlife markets in southern China. There are literally cages and cages full of wild animals caught from the wild, stacked on top of each other. You have people handling these animals, butchering them live in the market, and possibly touching their face, having a cigarette or eating. And so there's a lot of opportunity for people to get exposed to animal viruses. Scientists suspect that it was at those markets that the virus jumped species. Scientists now believe these strange-looking creatures called civet cats may be the source of the SARS virus in humans. The Chinese government banned the sale of wild animals and killed thousands of civet cats. And a combination of quarantines, travel restrictions, and luck eventually stopped SARS before it spread out of control but it was a dire warning of what could happen. SARS coronavirus was really the first pandemic of the 21st century. It affected people around the world in more than 25 countries. We saw the emergence of a new coronavirus thought to be from an animal. That was a wake up call that things could spread rapidly around the world. It was the kind of scenario that many public health workers had been warning about for years. Until two months ago, doctors didn't even know this virus existed. Decades before SARS, public health investigators started to notice a troubling trend. New viruses were appearing. The first Ebola outbreak in 1976 killed nearly 300 people. In the 1980s, HIV spread around the world. It's thought to have come from chimpanzees. In 1997, a new strain of flu jumped from chickens to people in Hong Kong. What we've seen now is an acceleration of emerging infectious diseases. There have been more and more outbreaks over the past few decades. 
It's estimated that up to 75% of those new or emerging diseases come from animals and spill over into humans. Jonathan Epstein has spent years researching how that process happens, and an outbreak of a virus called Nipah in Malaysia offered new clues. Here we go. This outbreak started in people when farmers were getting exposed to sick pigs. This was a, a new virus that hadn't been seen before, and it was killing about 40% of the people that got it. The Malaysian government slaughtered about a million pigs, but the virus didn't go away. Follow-up research found that the pigs contracted Nipah from bats that live in the rainforest where the pig farms were built. This is where the first infections happened. Notice the fruit trees over the pig pens. The bats were attracted to mango orchards on the farm. Though normally these bats would be foraging on figs or other wild fruit in the forest, they were drawn to these large orchards. They would eat mangoes, and in the branches that were overhanging the pig enclosure, they would drop pieces of fruit. That outbreak was the basis for the movie Contagion, and other outbreaks have cropped up since then, often because people or livestock encroached on wild animals. The human population, as it grows and grows, is putting incredible pressure on natural systems all over the world in ways that we never did historically. There are eight billion people living on this planet. That's six billion people more than we had at the time of the 1918 pandemic. And that dramatic increase has resulted in a significant disruption of the ecosystems around us. Most scientists believe the interaction between people and wild animals led to the COVID-19 pandemic. And they say the pandemic shows we haven't learned the lessons from previous outbreaks, especially from SARS. After the SARS outbreak, there was a flurry of research into treatments for coronaviruses and into discovering where they come from. The hope was we would really continue to invest in understanding how viruses like SARS emerged. But over time, people forgot about the urgency of SARS. You know, resources started to shift elsewhere to other crises or other emergencies. Funding dried up after the outbreak was contained, and so did the research that should have gone on that could have possibly prevented future outbreaks. Epstein was part of a team that did continue to research SARS after the outbreak was over. It turned out the SARS virus, like many other diseases he studied, most likely came from bats. In fact, by 2017, Epstein's colleagues had discovered dozens of coronaviruses in bats, including one 96% similar to the virus that causes COVID-19. And they found evidence that some of those viruses had already made the jump into people. Knowing people in bats were having contact gave us a, a strong signal that there was a risk of another coronavirus emerging. And the question was really gonna be, which one would it be and when would it happen? Though it's not certain how the new coronavirus emerged, it likely originated in bats and later passed through one of China's wild animal markets. They were allowed to reopen after the SARS outbreak ended. We've known that coronaviruses like this were a risk for emerging for a long time. This is really, if it isn't our final warning, it certainly should be a wake-up call right now that we need to change the way we're doing things. There may be a virus out there that is more transmissible and even more lethal, and we can't afford to wait until that makes its way out of an animal and into people. It's impossible to prevent spillovers entirely, but there are ways to reduce the risk. Regulating or shutting down the trade in wildlife, early detection of new diseases, and separating domestic and wild animals. Dennis Carroll started a project called PREDICT to try to find unknown animal diseases. How many different viruses are there? PREDICT allowed us to begin quantifying that. There are about 1.6 million different viruses we estimated about 600,000 of them had the potential to infect people. That doesn't mean they're likely to turn into a pandemic. And while the PREDICT project ended, similar research could identify high-risk areas and patterns in how viruses emerge. But stopping the next pandemic would require a major shift in resources and perspective. There is a whole way of looking at this that we must develop. We need to begin working in a new way having the animal and human public health communities working much more closely together. Let's change the paradigm. Stop reacting, go out, know the viruses before they know us, 
stop them before they have a chance to infect us.